you're probably tired of this. Oh, or this. You're not alone because I too was in this position. I still do sometimes, but I'm gonna help you. After spending countless of hours playing Breath of the Wild, I was able to ferry over those skills to Tears of the Kingdom, and boy do they help. Whether you're just getting your feet wet or looking to polish your combat skills, this video will provide you with basic techniques to defeat your enemies and belt out a battle cry, just like Bobby. That's my purse! I don't know you! <laughs> Have you ever felt your anxiety kicking in when you face a mini boss and all of your controller knowledge has been wiped out? Yeah, I am no stranger to that. The best practice is always when facing enemies head on. But before you launch into action, it is vital to understand the button layout of your controller as you will rely mostly on muscle memory. You already encountered some of these basics while you were at the Great Sky Island. But if all of those seems like a blur to you, we'll quickly review them now. First, make sure that Link always has a weapon, bow, and shield equipped. X is to jump. Y is for attack while B puts away Link's weapon. Hold ZR to use the bow and release it to shoot an arrow. B will also put away the bow. Holding ZL will activate the shield. This function is also useful for targeting a nearby enemy. Hold R and release to throw Link's weapon. You can also throw other materials by pressing the up button on the D-pad to select your material. Holding L will allow you to exploit Link's new abilities. As you gain combat experience, you will learn how to use Link's four new abilities to its fullest potential. Ultra Hand allows Link to grab and maneuver items, fuse for attaching materials to your weapons, recall to manipulate time, and ascend to reach higher areas. The top left of your screen gives the orientation of your D-pad functions. Knowing that this exists allows you to change weapons or materials during combat. Materials can be sorted according to type, fuse attack power, most used, and Zonai devices. This is very basic, but mastery of your button layout will help you breeze through the combinations later on. There are three different types of weapons, one-handed, two-handed, and a spear. A one-handed weapon is easy to hold and it allows you to wield the shield which is ideal for quick attacks while staying on the defense. Two-handed weapons are mostly durable but heavy. Launching an attack using a heavy weapon can leave Link open for enemy strikes as more force is required to swing. You will also need to sheath your weapon before wielding your shield. A spear has a long shaft and a pointed tip. Technically, it is still a two-handed weapon but it is lighter as it is meant for throwing or stabbing enemies. For beginners, using a spear is ideal as it can launch quick attacks while maintaining your distance. Whichever weapon you decide to use, effectively striking the enemy will depend on how you choose to approach it, either offensively or defensively. If you're just starting out with low hearts and one stamina wheel, I recommend to approach enemies on a defense position by wielding your shield which also locks in on one target enemy. When using a two-handed weapon, you can fuse your shield to your weapon and effectively block attacks. Once the enemy is aware of your presence, wait for it to attack first while keeping your defenses up. Each enemy type has its own attack patterns and paying close attention to those patterns will make combat easier to manage. Once you have the opportunity to strike the enemy, it's easy to get excited and spam the Y button. However, this will leave Link vulnerable from attacks by nearby enemies. If you find yourself in this position, especially when dealing combo attacks, cancel your attacks by pressing the X button. When using the spin attack using a two-handed weapon, you can also cancel by pressing B and evade the enemy. Flurry Rush is one of the most exciting combat mechanics in the game. It allows players to unleash a flurry of devastating attacks on enemies when executed correctly. It can take some time to master this technique, but it's very satisfying. Flurry Rush is triggered when you successfully dodge an enemy's attack at just the right moment. As the enemy's attack is about to land, perform a well-timed dodge by pressing the jump button. If executed perfectly, time will slow down and you'll enter Flurry Rush mode. Just make sure that you have a weapon on hand to unleash devastating attacks to your enemy. Observing enemy patterns and attack telegraphs will help you anticipate the perfect moment to execute your dodge. 
Apart from the flurry rush, mastering the art of parrying can turn the tide of battle in your favor. It is also one of the hardest to perfect as it requires precise timing. I myself had the hardest time mastering parrying over flurry rush. To do a parry, equip yourself with a shield. As the enemy's attack is about to connect, raise your shield by pressing A. When done correctly, time slows down indicating that you've successfully timed the block just right. Start by practicing on weaker enemies or those with predictable attack patterns. As you gain confidence and improve your timing, you can gradually move on to more challenging foes. Parrying is a high-risk, high-reward technique. Building confidence in your ability to time parries will allow you to be more aggressive and confident in combat. Bullet time allows players to slow down time and unleash precise shots with a bow and arrow. To activate bullet time, you need to have a bow equipped and be in mid-air. Jump from a high point and press the R button to draw your bow. Time will slow down, giving you a brief moment to line up your shots on enemy weak points. If you're having difficulty lining up your shots, you might want to check if your motion controls are enabled. When your hands are shaking during combat, it's only natural that the crosshair will move with your jitters. Disabling motion controls will improve your aim drastically. When fusing explosive materials to your arrow, such as a bomb fruit or a ruby, try not to become a casualty of your own action, such as this one. Make sure to shoot at a distance. Keep in mind that using bullet time consumes stamina. You will deplete one stamina bar for every arrow you shoot. I recommend prioritizing your stamina wheel over heart containers as it is crucial for both exploration and combat. You will need to complete 20 shrines for one full extra stamina wheel and 20 more shrines for a second set. An advanced approach that a player can do to achieve bullet time anywhere is through the bomb shield technique. To do this, fuse a bomb fruit, bomb barrel, or a time bomb with Link's shield. Once you have the bomb shield, execute shield surfing on the surface. To do a shield surf, hold ZL to wield your shield. While moving forward, press X to jump, then tap A mid-air to surf your shield. And since the shield is fused with an explosive, this will propel Link higher, allowing you to enter bullet time by activating your bow and arrow. All weapons, including swords, bows, and shields, have a durability rating. Each time you use a weapon to attack or defend, its durability decreases. Eventually, the weapon will break and become unusable. In Tears of the Kingdom, all Metal Beast weapons are ruined by the gloom caused by Ganondorf, giving them a decreased durability right off the bat. Although you can never avoid that any of your weapons are bound to break, Fusing your base weapon to a monster part with a high fuse power will increase the weapon's durability. Some weapons even have other effects that are unique to them. We will not cover all of those in this video, but just know that it exists. Weapon durability adds an element of strategic decision making to combat encounters. You need to consider whether it's worth using a strong weapon against weaker enemies or saving it for tougher battles. Additionally, you can pick up and use weapons dropped by defeated enemies to further increase encouraging resource management and adaptation. Preparation in Tears of the Kingdom is as vital as it is in real life. It is crucial for survival, combat effectiveness, and resource management. Prepare meals and elixirs using various ingredients you find on your exploration. Combining ingredients with different effects can give you the temporary boosts in health, stamina, speed, attack power, and resistance to various elements. Before invading enemy camps, take a moment to assess the situation. Observe the types of enemies, their positions, and any environmental advantages that can be used to your benefit. Identify the most immediate threats among the group of enemies. I recommend eliminating enemies on watchtowers as they will alert the entire camp once you are spotted. You may also lure a few enemies away from the rest so as not to confront all of them at once. Use structures to hide from enemies' line of sight. Monster eyeballs such as the Keith's eyeball adds homing quality when fused with an arrow and can effectively take down an enemy from a distance. Firing a bomb fruit or a fire fruit to nearby explosive barrels can deal area of effect damage and hit multiple foes simultaneously. The same is also true with electricity on rain, yielding area of effect damage. Tears of the Kingdom added a clever way to outplay multiple enemies at once by using materials you find on your exploration. Among those useful items are muddle buds, 
and puff shrooms, which are both found when visiting the deaths. You can either throw or attach a muddle bud to an arrow and hit the strongest enemy on the camp. This will inflict confusion on the target enemy and it will fight its nearby allies. It would be better if the spores come into contact with an enemy group so they fight each other and you can just watch it unfold until it wears off or until enemies are slain. Puff shrooms Puff shrooms are also better used against enemy groups. Once it bursts into the area, enemies will lose sight of Link, giving you an opportunity to perform a sneak attack. Remember that these are just basic combat skills that when mastered will give you an upper hand in the game. Mastery takes time and patience. It's okay to be scared when you encounter your first Lino or your first Gloom hands. Take time to study enemy patterns and exploit their weaknesses. When you die, it's also okay. Tears of the Kingdom is not like Minecraft where you lose all your items when slain. Now, if there's one tip that I want you to take away with, that is to save. Save your progress before practicing. This has been Rice Mama, and until then, happy gaming! Click on the key block.